Hey, hello friends and welcome to this new Flutter video. In this, we're gonna be taking a look at creating responsive template widget for your Flutter applications. So this template widget will hold all the boilerplate code that each of your Flutter application page requires, plus much more. So uh, the basic three things that you need in each of your Flutter widget is the width, height, and orientation. So these three things are important for adding responsiveness to your page. You need to check orientation, and depending upon the orientation, you need to have different layouts to support that device orientation. So you can see that even when I add these simple three parameters to our application and a simple scaffold and an app bar with a simple container, the code keeps looking bulky. And this is not even the core part of our page. So our main focus in this video is to take all of this boilerplate code and move that to a new responsive widget, which will hold all this information and will provide that to us through functions. Okay, so the first thing that I'm about to do is I'm going to create a new file here. I'm going to create a new file with the name of responsive widget. And in this file, I'm going to create a stateless widget called responsive widget. Okay, so the first thing that we want to do here is we want to move all these three parameters that we have from the media query to this responsive widget. And now what we want to do is we also want to move this scaffold to that responsive widget. We'll take the scaffold and cut it from here and move that to the new responsive widget and paste that here. Okay, so just to be safe, I'm going to wrap this scaffold with a new safe area. To keep this safe from the status bar up above the app bar. So, okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to move all these three parameters through their own class. So let me just create a new class here. And I'll just name this class a size information. And the size information class is going to be a simple class just like this. And, the, and for the orientation, I'll require, I'll need to add this material.dart header. So this is going to be a simple information class that will hold the width, height, and orientation. So we'll go back to our responsive widget. And in this, from all these three properties, I'm just going to create a new instance of size information. Okay, so now when we have created the size information, we need to find a way to pass this information and the context to the actual page that we're going to use this widget in. So for that, what we're going to do is we're going to create a simple function up above in the responsive widget. This will return a widget, obviously, and it will be a function that will give the implementation class a context that is going to be a build context of context and a size information that we're going to pass down below here. So we'll just name this constraints for now. And we'll name this fun function builder like all the other widgets. Okay, so as we have declared the builder up above, we need to also make a constructor for responsive widget from which we're going to pass this builder. So we created a responsive widget constructor with this dot builder as a named parameter. Now let's come below here. I'm going to remove the container and in place of the container, I'm going to add the builder. So we're going to add this builder function and this will require a context and this information that we're going to pass to this. So basically we're going to receive this builder function from the implementing class and when we're going to pass in the context and the information. Let's move to the main.dart file. I'm going to add a responsive widget. Responsive widget that we just created. And it will require a builder to be here. And it will take a context, give us a context and constraints. Constraints. And from this context and constraints, we can use all these properties into our widgets. And we can just return a container like we usually do and we can add a simple child and that says text and in this text we're going to say um, hello flutter and add a semicolon here so instead of adding all that boilerplate code here we just move that code to the responsive widget and moreover if you want to pass the app bar here what you can do is you can go here and create a new parameter called final app bar or a final widget because app bar can be anything it can be a widget or something so I'm just going to uh, keep it an app bar let's name this app bar and we also are going to create a 
a variable for drawer. Let's name this drawer. And we're also going to mention them as the named parameters. We'll name this this.app or comma this.drawer. And this builder is going to be a required parameter. And in place in the scaffold below, we're going to replace this app bar with a newer app bar that is the app bar and the drawer that is going to be the drawer. So if we don't pass any app bar, this is going to be null and the drawer is also going to be null. So that is not creating any issues. And even if we don't pass any app bar, the safe area will keep the scaffold from entering to the status bar. So this is also a good point. And uh, also in the scaffold, we're going to add resize to a wide bottom insets in some cases because we don't want our keyboard to be um, to create some padding issues in our application. Let's keep this to be true. Oh, sorry, false. And this is completely up to you. Whatever functionality you want all your pages to have, you can add that into the responsive widget. So this is really a flexible widget. And let's say we're going to use that here. And other than the builder, I'm going to add app bar here. That is going to be a simple app bar. And it's going to uh, say the title that is going to be a text of app bar, of uh, Flutter app, say. And let's just run this application. And you can see that the app looks good. And even if we want to add a drawer, we can add simply add this into the as a parameter to the responsive widget. So other than this, how it can be useful is that uh, in most of the activities you want in most of the widgets, widget pages, you want to add a um, snack bar to show a simple toast or other information to the user. For example, if the user is asking to update the profile, we need to uh, show to the user if there are any errors or the profile is successfully updated. So in those cases, you need to add a snack bar. So this, there is a problem with snack bar that the snack bar requires the context of the scaffold. So let's say we add a simple uh, button here in place of the text. I'm going to add a simple center here. I'm going to add a simple button that is a child and I'm going to add a button called material, bu uh, material button and in the on pressed I'm going to keep this null for now and I'm going to add a child that says text in the text I'm going to add a click me and add a bit of style to it style text style and a color of colors dot white so let me just reformat the code and just run it again and in the application, there is nothing because I have not added any color to it. So in the color, I'm going to add colors.orange and run it again. And you can see that there is a simple button, but we have not yet implemented the on pressed. Okay, so in the on pressed function of the material button, let's just add a simple snack bar called snack bar. And this is of green color that says a text of, yeah, hello, this is a snack bar. And so I'm going to call the snack bar using scaffold dot off context dot show snack bar and show the snack bar here so let me just run the app again use the hot reload show the phone here and when I click on the click me you can see that there is no snack bar here so if we go to the run window you can go up here and you can see that um, there is an exception thrown that scaffold dot off called with the context that does not contain a scaffold Okay, so now to make this snack bar working, what we can do simply is go to the responsive widget and instead of passing in the builder itself, we can add a builder and in the builder, we can add a context which can further return the builder that we passed in as a function to the responsive widget here. So now when we go to the main.dar file and run the app again, and let's show the emulator and you when you click on it yeah you can see that there is a bottom snack bar there which will go away as we click away from the button and when we click on the button it comes again when we click on the button it comes again so instead of adding that whole builder functionality and all the scaffolds and app bar and drawer into your main activity into your every page of your application you can just create a simple responsive widget which holds all this information and a simple size information 
class that holds the width, height, and the orientation. And using these two classes, you can take away much of the boilerplate code that each of your application page is going to have. So in the main.dar file, I clearly have, an, have the access to the orientation. For example, to create the widget, we're we can use the orientation from the constraints, constraints.orientation. And according to the orientation, we can create the layout of our widgets. Okay, so this is it for this tutorial. This will take away much of the boilerplate code that you have in your application and will hold that into two simple classes that is a responsive widget and a size information. So the responsive widget class is much up to you. You can add as many functionalities that you want all your pages to have and you can cover them into a single responsive widget. So I hope you learned much in this tutorial. If you like the tutorial, please hit the like button and the subscribe button for more Flutter videos coming your way. See you next time. Peace.